Hello, everyone. Well, cost of prescribed pain medication is $17.8 billion in US alone. There are other therapies that are affordable, effective, and proven by science. Murma therapy from Ayurveda is one of the therapies that has demonstrated successful outcomes for pain management. Well, this is our topic today. I am Amita from Nourish Talk, a platform from natural and holistic therapies. Presenting this topic, we have Dr. Gaurav Full, who is an Ayurveda doctor. He's a master's in Shalya Tantra. Dr. Gaurav is one of the top experts in Murma therapy who has authored two books. Currently, he's a clinical registrar with the Indian government. We are really excited to have you, Dr. Gaurav, here. Thank you so much. Thank you, my pleasure. All right, so we will get started now with the introduction to um, Murma therapy, to Murma. Uh, namaste all, good morning to US. So I'll start with my topic. It's uh, Marm Chikitsa, means Marm therapy. So first of all, what is Marm basically? Marm word, the word means in Sanskrit, the secret. Marmas are basically the vital areas of the body through which positive energy flows. They are important identifiable parts of, of our anatomy and reflect key physiological and, and psychological processes that occur within it. Marmas are the key connecting points to all our aspects of our energy from innermost consciousness to the outermost physical, physical organs. Basically, they are the connecting windows between outer uh, body and the inner soul. So they connect us to the subconscious mind of the patient as well as the inner conscious of the patient. So these are basically Marmani. Then definition of the Marm Chikitsa. Actually, we have framed a Sanskrit verse for the Marm Chikitsa. This is a self-framed definition of Marm Chikitsa. That is, Upcharatmikya drishtya sharirasya nirdishth sthananam yatha kalam yatha vidam cha prenam Marm Chikitsa iti abhidiyate. So it goes like, uh, Marm Chikitsa can be defined as technique to stimulate specific vital points of the body in a certain way at critical moment of time for the purpose of healing. So most important thing is for the purpose of healing, we stimulate certain specific areas, which are known as marm points in the body. So they are 107 in number, according to Ayurveda. So as we go, the definition of marm, as per the classical text of the Ayurveda, the Sushrut Sanita, Acharya uh, Sushrut, who is famously known as father of surgery, he has given the definition of marm. That is Marmani Nam Ma Siras Nayu Asti Sandhi Sanni Pataha Teshu Sabhavta Eshef Prana Tishtanti. Means Marm point is a junction on body where two or more tissues, types of tissues meet, such as muscles, veins, ligaments, bones, or joints. And second line you have to focus on is Teshu Sabhavta e Prana Tishtanti. Prana means the vital force, the vital energy, the living force of our body. It resides. Uh, in the marm areas, marm points specifically, there is concentrated pranic energy in the marm areas. So this is very important aspect in as, uh, as far as marm therapy is concerned. And marmas are basically seat of pran. So marm are related to energy of the body, mind, pran, and dosh. Dosh are the humors in the humors, which are in Ayurveda, they are three, there are three basic humors, vat, pit, and kapha. So, marmas are primarily energetic centers where the life force accumulates or flows. Thus, treating marm is more a meaning of treating pran rather than simply working on the physical tissues or organs. This is very important. We are basically dealing with the pranic energy directly when we are dealing with marm. So, next is marm chikitsa. Basically, as I told you the definition, now basically marm therapy is an initiate Indian practice that focuses on the manipulation of the subtle energy that is pran in the body for purpose of supporting the healing process. Basically, they serve as points of access to the body's innate intelligence, opening the doorway to health and well-being. So marm points are vehicles to reach the ultimate goal of Ayurveda. Ultimate goal of Ayurveda is perfect health firmly rooted in a vibrantly alive body and fully awakened mind. So body and mind both are important uh, to consider as far as health is concerned. So marm points are basically access to the inner soul. Then importance of marm chikitsa, according to Ayurveda, Acharya Sushrut has said, 
that they are half of the surgical practice means they are of utmost important uh, importance as any forceful trauma on them may cause death or deformity that's why it is also said that maryanti iti marmani means if there is any forceful trauma on them they may cause they may be fatal they may cause death so basically they are designated as important as any other thing in the surgical practice and if one uh, needs to go for surgery he needs to know the knowledge of marm definitely it is indispensable for a surgeon basically so so i just wanted to ask uh, like a uh, lot of people probably have prevented um, conventional surgery if they had gone for marma therapy right that that would be a point to make uh actually we can't say in all surgeries but okay. uh, to a certain excess uh, we can delay the surgery or prevent the surgery we can treat it medically for I example see. in condition of spinal disorders back aches the various back aches spine deformities we can go for marma chikitsa instead of surgery okay. All right. So let's just talk about the historical significance of Marma Chikitsa. Yes, this is very important. As uh, unfortunately, the world has recently come to know about Marma Chikitsa, although it has been there since Ved. The oldest literature available is Vedas. So first of all, Rig Ved has the reference of Marma. There was a word known as Drapi, which which means body armors. So in the ancient times, there were a lot of wars. and weapons were used so people used the the body armors to protect themselves we can see in the mythological serials or uh, in stories war war movies the body armors so basically the word drapi which was there to protect the marm points then accordingly in mahabharat the famous uh, mythological story of uh, india so the so shri krishna bhagwan uh, lord shri krishna he uh, left for the abode because of injury in the sole of foot and uh, there resides tal hrde marm so there was injury on his tal hrde marm so he has to left his body then again uh, in different uh, ancient texts of uh, ayurved like uh, charak sushrut ashtang uh, famously known as brihatrai the greatest try of the ayurved so they all contain the various references of marm signs so it is very old as old as the mankind and now it has come to the practice in recent era so as far as classification of the man points is concerned the ayurved classifies it in different forms like according to dosh as i told you vat pit and kapha the three body types basic body types of the patients normal human beings and according to structure means some marma uh, marm points have a uh, muscles in majority some have veins some have uh, joints some have bony tissue so according to that according to structure we can differentiate then according to location very important for any clinician where they are located in the body and last is according to result of trauma as i told you they are fatal they may be fatal if there is a, a major trauma is on them so basically the ancient acharyas have um, classified them according to result of trauma also so we can see one by one these classifications so first of all we'll deal with the classification according to body humors or dosh so basically three basic types vat pit and kapha and they are further categorized under five subheadings that is five types of vat five types of pit and five types of kapha it is a vast topic actually so that can't be covered in this short uh, lecture so i'll uh, just shift it so just for the knowledge different humors have different marm points which can be assessed through them next in next slide we can see this according to structure according to structure the mass marm means where the muscles are in the majority so and then sira marm snayu marm asti sandhi and one another classification has been given by an ancient acharya acharya vagvat that is dhamni means arterial which have arteries in majority so these are basic a classification according to the structure of the marm points so the, these can be seen one by one when the when we'll talk about marm points we can see which marm is of uh, muscles nature which is of venous nature which is of tendons uh, and that's it so next classification is according to trauma result of trauma means there are five different categories very important they go like sadhya pranahar sadhya means sudden which can cause sudden death that is within 7 days patient may die they may be immediately fatal or may be uh, may cause death in 7 days 
So total 19 marm points are sadhya prana marm, immediately fatal. Example is like uh, hridya marm, that is heart, navel, the urinary bladder, that is vasti marm. Then again, uh, the good marm, that is anorectal junction. These are the marm which are sadhya prana har. They may be fatal. They are the vessels over the neck, they may be suddenly fatal. Then kalantar prana har marm means which may cause death after a period of time, maybe after a fortnight. Or within a fortnight, we can say Kalantar Pranharman. Example is like uh, in the thighs, there are femoral vessels, which are one of the man points known as Urvi man. Again, if we talk about mythological stories, then uh, in Mahabharat, the uh, warrior Bhim, he killed Duryodhan by hitting on his thigh. And the trauma on the thigh caused injury to the Urvi man, that is femoral vessels. There was a lot of bleeding and he died after a day. So that is Kalantar Pranhar Marm example. The third are Vishalya Gan Marm. Shalya means any weapon, instrument which causes the injury. So there are three Marm points in the body which are Vishalya Gan means as far as the Shalya is inside the body, the patient is alive. So we can treat it, take out the Shalya, then he can be saved. But if we take out the Shalya without uh, treating it and suddenly we take it out. For example, this is one of the points that is Thapani Marm. This is Vishalyagan. If there is an injury of arrow and we take the arrow like this, then there will be exudation of the bath from the body, bath dosh, and it will cause sudden death. So we have to treat it. Then after treatment, we can take it out. We can't take it out suddenly. So that is the basically Vishalyagan marma. Next marma is Vakalyagar. Vakalya means deformity. The marm points which may not be fatal, but injury on them will cause certain deformity in the body. For example, the elbow joint, this is known as Kurpar Marm. So whenever there is injury on this Marm point, a specific trauma of a certain force, then it may cause the deformity, permanent deformity in the body. Then last is the Rujakar. Ruja means pain. The Marm points which cause continuous pain if injured. For example, I'll give ankle sprain. When we have a twisted ankle, sometimes there is sprain. Then you can see many patients, they complain recurrent pain again and again, in uh, especially in winters or when they uh, stand for a prolonged time, then it cause pain. So these are Ruja Karma. So this is the basic classification according to result of trauma on them. Then similarly, we can see next classification on the man points like classification made. This is all what I was talking about. Different Sadhya Pranahar, Kalantra Pranahar, Vishalyagan, Vyakalyagan and Ruja Karma. So 19, 33, 3, 44, and 8. These are different classification of the marm. You can see death within 7, seven days, 15 days. Then after taking out the shalya, then result in dis uh, disability and constant pain. So these are the various classifications according to result of trauma. Then most important classification is classification according to the site and the body where they are located in the body. So according to Ayurveda, there are 107 marmas. Marmani, as called in Sanskrit, the plural shabd for marm is marmani. So we can see 107 marmani are there in the body, according to Ayurveda. In the Tamil tradition, that is Siddha system of medicine in India, they believe about 365 marm points. So they may be different according to different uh, schools of thought. So basically, in Ayurveda, we believe 107 marm and their location is, they are located 11 in each limb. Means upper right limb and left limb both contains 11 marms. Means 11 each, 22. Then both legs contain 22. Then front of the chest and abdomen, front of the torso contains 12 marm. Back contains 14 marm and supraclavicular region. Above this, there is 30, there are 37 uh, marmani are there. So total, it comes out to be 107. So we'll talk about them one by one. So we can first of all see the marmani of upper limbs, upper limbs or limbs, we can say. So this is a journal picture which shows the location of marm points all over the body in the front side and the back side. So I'll come to them one by one in the next slides. We can see this is the location on the front of the body. In this picture, you can see there are three classification, uh, classifications in one picture. I've tried to design it in, in a way. You can see on the 
left side of the your screen in the lower side there are five classifications are there that is maroon color mass marm sira marm then sandhi marm snayu marm and asthi marm so accordingly they are located on the color color coding is done then on the right side you can see the dimensions of the marm so there is specific dimension of each marm point like half finger count one finger count two finger count three finger count and four finger count how do we calculate the finger count what we do is we measure this part from here to here we can measure this part this part and then divide it by 4 so it comes out to be one finger count of the patient so thumb rule is whenever we go for marm marm therapy uh, for a patient we have to consider the finger count of the patient itself not of the physician this has to be kept in mind so this is basically the pictorial depiction of the location of the marm points like example here is thapni marm you can see in the picture so accordingly we can locate different marm points on the body then in the next slide we can see the location of marm points in the on the back side of the body so like uh, in the base of neck, skull yeah. basically where there is junction of neck and skull at the nape of neck there is tricartica marm which signifies the atlanto axial joint or atlanto uh, occipital joint basically so it designates that area then accordingly over the trapezius muscle there is ans marm and so on so we can see the picture pictorial depiction of the marmani located over the back of the body in the next picture we can see the marmani located in the supraclavicular region and this is the basically abdomen and back the location of one points so briefly like you can see in the navel area there is nabi marm uh, below the navel area there is vasti marm that is supra pubic region where the urinary bladder is located then in the uh, this center of the chest towards left side is the hridaya marm then there are two marmas tan mool and stan rohit the stan mool is two fingers below the nipple and stan rohit is two fingers above the nipple and then uh, aplap and apstam the aplap marm resides in the basically if we divide the clavicle lateral end of the clavicle and medial border of the clavicle with a line we draw an imaginary line and the aplap marm resides just beneath this midpoint of this line the line dividing the uh, the line joining the lateral and medial border of the clavicle midpoint of that line and just below that midpoint is the location of aplap marm and apstam marm is located in the this is angle of lewis the manubrio sternal angle angle of lewis we can uh, locate here if we do like this we can see a bony prominence in the upper side of the chest here so here attaches the second intercostal muscle so just be below this is the location of apstam marm this signifies basically the division of the bronchial tree right bronchus and the left bronchus as the text says they pervey air basically they carry air inside them so they are the basically bronchioles so these are this is about the marmani over the front of the abdomen and chest and as far as back marmani are concerned two marm located here over the trapezius muscle are ans marm then if we follow that spine of scapula it ends around t3 level of third thoracic vertebrae then parallel to them is the ans phalak marm if we come a little uh, below then uh, the inferior border of scapula is at t7 for a six seventh vertebrae just above this is sixth intercostal muscle so over the sixth intercostal muscle is the location of brihati marm then we come all down the renal angle on the renal angle is location of parsho sandhi marm then over the posterior superior iliac spine sacroiliac joint there is location of the cutic peron marm and Uh, then over the ischial tuberosities are the cucundar marm so this is basically the classification over the back so as we go on the next slide we can see the supraclavicular region marm points so basically the they are multiple in number basically only adhipati is one of the marm which is here in the top of the vault which controls the sahasrar chakra is single in number all other marmani of the supraclavicular region are multiple in number like manya and nila these are the vessels in the neck different vessels in the neck on both sides of the trachea 
so these are basically two and two in number matrika are eight in number likewise there are different marmani which are 37 in number in total and these are the names of the, those marmani in the next slide we can see the the pictorial depiction according to the color coding we can see on outer canthas of the eyes here is the location of apang marma and the line joining the eyebrows and the ear if we join this the line which bisects at the hairline where the hairline starts here is the location of shankh marma that is over the temples temporal regions and accordingly in between the apang and the shankh is the location of utkshep marma we can see in the picture then behind the lobule of the ear there is a groove between the bone and the lobule of the ear and that is known as vidur marma so accordingly over the vault of the skull if we see the sutures of skull the middle of the sutures of the skull is known as simant marma so accordingly we can see different marm points located over the skull area so we come to the next next slide now we come to the point how the marm therapy can be done what are the methods of doing stimulation of the marm points so there are basically two different methods one is pharmacological where any kind of drug is used and second is non pharmacological so as far as pharmacological is concerned i'll talk about them one by one and uh, non pharmacological methods contain uh, first of all is pressure technique which is commonly used in the opd level because it is less time consuming we have to apply the pressure over the marm point a specific pressure which is uh, which the patient is able to bear means the all marm points are tender so whenever we apply the pressure over the marm point it will cause some pain so we have to see the threshold of the patient pain threshold of the patient accordingly we can apply the pressure and the another rule is where there are uh, there is location of uh, the marm containing bony bony tissues or tendons we can apply more pressure over the muscles we can apply more pressure but we have to give less pressure over the vessels so accordingly we can differentiate the pressure and uh, we apply pressure for 0.8 seconds for once because the cardiac cycle is of 0.8 seconds so once we when we press for example this is shipper marm so when we press for 0.8 second then release then press then release so like this we can go for 20 times over a single marm point second point is pranic healing that is energy healing so uh, we can do this but for doing this type of practice for marm stimulation we need to have a good source of pranic energy in us so we need to meditate a lot we need to follow the guidelines mentioned in text and last is the marm vedan that is needling technique we can uh, do needling needling over the marm points in the next slides i'll talk about the pharmacological methods Excellent. we have pharmacological pharmacological is there in this slide as well yes i'll uh, talk uh -huh. about them in detail uh, okay you can please yes. all right no problem no problem so you can see the pharmacological methods first of all there is abhyang method that is massage basically ayurvedic massage so uh, the massage is given over the marm points specifically and that can be done in three types one is we do the generalized body massage whole over the body is massage then we come to specific marm points second method is regional means we have to treat upper limb so we'll give massage to whole of the limb then one by one to the marm points and last one is the localized means directly we can massage on the marm points so when we have less time we are uh, sitting in opd or the more number of clients are there so we go for localized massage otherwise there are sessions of full session which contains the generalized massage and then we come to individual marm points so accordingly we can manage then in next in next method is udvartan udvartan means the rubbing of dry powder this is also known as dry powder massage so this is a specific method which is adopted in ayurved to reduction for reduction of weight and the people who are kapha jin prakriti who have more water content in their body so we do the herbal powder massage so this can also be used to stimulate the marm points the dry powders are rubbed over the marm areas it is rejuvenating de stresses the body and relax the marmani it helps to remove excess kapha dosh strengthen the body and helps in reducing weight also so this is this method is again very important next method is 
when we use different kinds of aromatherapy aromatherapy is a different branch although but when we use both in uh, in conjugation with each other means aromatic oils are used to stimulate the merm points we can use them for massage we can use them for nasal installation which is known as nasse in ayurved so it can yield us uh, double uh, results in the shorter time so benefits of both the therapies will be there aromatherapy as well as merm points so there are different methods accordingly abhyangam snedhara sne bichu and sne, uh, steam inhalation means snedhara means the continuous pouring of the oil over a certain merm point then sne bichu means we soak a gauze inside a aromatic oil and keep it over a particular like small children are there if the patient is small child we can't give the pressure technique so what we'll do is we'll soak the gauze point uh, gauze piece in the oil medicated oil then we'll keep it over the skull there is there are different marmani over the skull and we can keep it there for 20 to 25 minutes so this is the method of doing sne pichu then steam inhalation we can put the aromatic oils in, uh, and take the steam so it will stimulate the shringatak marm shringatak marm is located inside the nostrils inside the nose deep inside the nose so accordingly we can use the aromatherapy for marm stimulation next uh, method is basically fourth method of the pharmacological is the different lap means medicated pastes are applied over a specific marm point like there is trauma to somebody there is a history of fall there is trauma you don't know whether there is fracture before clinical examination what we can do is we can just apply the herbal pastes medicated paste over the marm points it will enhance the healing capacity of the body it will help to heal without doing any manipulation we can yield the results then there is fomentation per shake we can again pour the specific medicines over the uh, marm areas then accordingly dhara one important method is sne dhara we can pour the oil directly over this point and it is very good for stress insomnia hypertension etc then there are herbal, herbal methods where local remedies or oral medicines are given to the patient for uh, treatment of marm points then non pharmacological as i have, I have dis, uh, discussed earlier like mardan pranic healing and marm vedha so these are basically different types of doing marm therapy then another important aspect is spiritual dimension of marm means we can yield the spiritual benefits also we can get the spiritual benefits we know uh, there was a research some years back which said if we hug our loved ones for 20 seconds just for 20 seconds it influxes the positive hormones in the inside our body happy hormones then it decreases our stress level so this is the power of touch you can see when there are some uh, guru like uh, like shri shri ravi shankar or uh, some uh, guru are there like so they touch here and they transfer the energy like mahatma bodh so this touch can go to the deeper level traversing our thoughts feelings and emotions so this is trans uh, transformative pranic source skill touch of a sincere practitioner of healing arts can convey its message to, of good health through pran into man that is mind buddhi their your uh, senses and smriti and it can penetrate through ahankar and convey message to chit into the soul so this is a bit of uh, spiritual language but uh, in simple words we can say through a sincere touch of empathetic clinician we can re reach the subconscious level of the patient we, we can uh, treat him from the basic cause ayurved says that uh, the physician who enters the subconscious level of the patient through his wisdom is able to treat the disease completely otherwise we can see patient is underlying stress and having complaints of headache hypertension uh, what the doctors do they just give the anti hypertensive treatment just give the medicine for headache but that is not the cure again it comes again so we have to reach the subconscious level of the patient then only we can treat him completely so this is the principle of ayurved so these spiritual dimensions can also be met with marm chikitsa accordingly marm points are the junctions of the body with mind as i was talking earlier they can stimulate unconsciously body processes sensory responses or emotional reactions triggering marm points can release negative emotions and remove mental blockages including subconscious nature like addiction we can help the patient to leave this addiction 
by continuous murm treatment so this is the power of murm stimulation accordingly we can treat various psychological disorders then we come to uses of murm chikitsa where we can use murm chikitsa for the benefit of patient so they can be used to treat disease of nerves and brain traumatic neurological or neurosurgical lesions traumatic paraplegia hemiplegia monoplegia etc these are the diseases where there is nerve regeneration is very very less so murm stimulation helps the body to heal itself it improves the regeneration power of the body itself it helps the body to heal then orthopedic lesions especially pivds prolapsed intervertebral disc then improves functions of the body by achieving homeostasis in is it maintains the homeostasis at physiological level then activate the mal dwelt or deformed body parts or musculature for example there is congenital shortening of the neck is sometime delayed milestones are there so we can help the patient man points can be used to boost immunity rejuvenation of mind relieve stress and promote meditation very very important aspect stress is the basic cause of many diseases so we can reduce the stress by doing murm uh, stimulation we can do the self murm therapy also for reducing our stress level accordingly there are other uses of the murm chikitsa like uh, the very important use is pain management this is a very potent method of pain management management as madam amrita was uh, saying in the introduction phase that i can say it murm chikitsa vedna harne shrestha vedna means pain it is the best way to pacify vat dosh that is basic cause of any pain according to ayurveda it reduces the intensity of pain and gradually increasing the uh, increases the pain threshold of the body this is very important aspect because whenever somebody is in the chronic pain for example he is having osteoarthritis cervical spondylosis migraine the patient starts to believe that i have to live with this pain for whole of the life there is no cure because in allopathic treatment there are only analgesic drugs which gives immediate relief but for a temporary phase then again the pain comes back because the problem is there only so what murm chikitsa achieves it increases the threshold of pain of the patient towards the pain so gradually he or she starts to feel lesser pain on the similar stimulus so in this way we can build the confidence of the patient that he or she can be cured of that pain and another well known fact is stimulation of large sensory fibers from peripheral tactile receptors can depress the transmission of pain signals from same body areas this is well documented like uh, there is gate theory of the pain so stimulation of uh, the pressure fibers can reduce the sensation of the pain then again murm stimulation induces psychogenic excitation of the central analgesic system means when we stimulate the murm points the body body is actually a universal chemical lab it can release the chemicals according to need you can see the siddh purush uh, the like sadhus and uh, basically those people who are uh, who, who meditate well they don't often need medicines for healing themselves so what uh, how can they heal themselves because of these neurotransmitters and different chemicals which are released by our body for example opioids are released by our body also endorphins are released these are the positive hormones happy hormones endorphins they reduce the stress level and opioids act as analgesics when we give medicines like morphine and another opioids they also do the same thing so what we do with murm chikitsa is we stimulate the body to release more of the opioids so they can act as analgesics so there is spontaneous reduction of the pain on stimulate stimulating those murm points accordingly we can achieve the pain pain reduction then procedure how we how we will go out for murm therapy first of all we have to examine the body surface for assessment of locating the proper murm points is necessary because every individual has different body structure different height different weight so uh, we can't say that the location of the murm is uh, located at this particular point we have to read the surface anatomy we have to clinically examine the patient then locate the murm point of the patient then we can go, go for the treatment so first is examination of the patient examination of body surface and then finger count we can uh, count the finger count of the patient so that we can assess exact place of the murm points actually it is impossible to give give exact location because of individual differences so every individual can have murm points located according to his body 
so we have to examine the patient then locate the mar point before mar therapy one has to determine actual location then exact location of mar varies according to an individual depending upon measurement of body and body parts as i was talking about then adapt the method according to need method means we have to go for uh, abhyan we have to go for uh, udwartan or we have to give pressure technique we are we have to go for pranic healing so that will depend upon the clinical sense of the patient example if there is a small child we can't go for pressure technique so we'll go for another techniques like a bhyan lep etc if the the patient is young adult we can go for pressure technique or depending upon the how much time we have in hand if the patient is of indoor ipd patient we can go for a bhyan method opd patient we can go for pressure technique accordingly we can decide according to our wisdom what method suits us so we will go for that only <coughs> i'll conclude this uh, into uh, the concept of one uh, therapy by saying it is an important it is important to observe the effect of one therapy in different orthopedic and neuromuscular diseases in a large scale actually different individuals are working on marn chikitsa now the, there is a rage in last decade now everybody is attracted towards this because of its uh, immediate action and harmless therapy but we need to generate a lot of scientific data to prove its benefit and uh, to make it accepted globally although people are accepting it because of its clinical benefits but for research purpose we need to generate a big data so we need to do different in different conditions man therapy document it then we can say uh, by research then man therapy is harmless affordable and easy therapy to implement it is the need of the day it is a great way a great way to give back, give back to the society what we have earned from it simple to learn and free from surgery self mar therapy means uh, doing stimulation of mar points on your own body can be administered by everyone it is effective in acute neurological lesions but cautionate is advised so for neurology uh, to deal with neurological lesions you need to have a good experience so first you need to learn self mar therapy then we start to do on the safer patients like means uh, on the limbs limb marmani are comparatively safer so then we can gradually go to abdomen chest then supraclavicular region because they can be fatter so gradually we can approach them so first of all we have to learn the self mar therapy then we can go for next condition so in that way we can give maximum benefit to the patient and i'll conclude it with this uh, a comma a very famous saying that for all the happiness mankind can gain is not in pleasure but in relief from pain rest from pain this can be well acknowledged by someone who is in chronic pain who had migraines and all and when we reduce the pain of that patient such patient the happiness is like it is priceless and as uh, said by hippocrates divine is the task to relieve pain and acharya sushrut the father of surgery has said chikitsat punyatamam na kinchit api sushuma that is there is no other pious thing no other uh, service to the humanity like the treatment so chikitsa is the best uh, service to the humanity so i'll conclude with this my presentation of the marm chikitsa so now it is open for the any interaction thank you Thank you so much for such an insightful presentation. I was just going to add that marm chikitsa and acupuncture, right? Acupuncture is also in the similar concept that when the uh, acupuncture and acupressure, which is widely accepted, uh, you know, at least in United States, has a similar kind of principles to marma therapy. How, how do you feel about that? I mean, would you like to comment? Uh, yes, actually, ma'am. Uh, basically, the, if we go for the origin of the acupuncture and acupressure and uh, marm science. basically they are interrelated in some sense although marm points are specific 107 in number and acupressure points are a lot of all over the body the reason is uh, there was lot of research done by chinese people in that and india has lagged behind because of lack of research there was actually guru shishya parampara in india means one who knows something teaches his uh, disciples then they teaches their disciples and we did not document very well as you can see marm chikitsa definition has been framed by us uh, after so many years thousands of years so there there was a lack of documentation where we lagged behind but as we know ki martial art has been originated from india only 
the kalari paitu art of the india has given rise to martial arts and there is a story which is well written in history that is indian both people when we, they went to south asian countries like china they taught that kalari art to those people and then they had the knowledge of these marm points also the indian both people when they uh, taught the kalari art then they also taught that uh, the science of marm and gradually it was developed further and similarly the acupressure originated from china only so there was inter exchange of the knowledge there and that's why some uh, at some points they overlap over each other marm points and acupressure points are similarly located in some areas of the body plus the concept is uh, we can say partially it is similar like pressure technique is similar or marm vedan is uh, bit related to acupuncture also but the other methods are entirely different the sphere of marm chikitsa is actually a bit wider than the acupressure therapy so they can overlap over sure, sure, sure. and plus uh, acupressure depends upon the meridians of the body they have the Correct. concept of meridians so yes. when we talk about ayurvedic marm therapy we talk about strotas different channels energy channels in the body and uh, vat pit and cup different humors of the body so there is uh, basically principles are dif uh, different although results are uh, both are uh, immediate result giving correct, correct so we open it up for the audience to ask questions uh, please so, any questions anyone has um, we are opening it up i guess everyone <laughs> I'm waiting for a moment. Um, so, um, Doctor, okay, I do have see a question. Hang on one second. I think I have to stop share to see the question. Can we learn to do marma therapy on cells? Yes. That is the question. Yes, yes. It can be learned easily. For that, you just have to be, uh, get the basic knowledge of the marm points. One or two points I can teach you. You can do start doing right now. so we can do it uh, together what we have to do is actually i'll talk about stress actually stress is a major factor nowadays because of this pandemic so what we can do is we can stimulate this point the third eye which is known as third eye the glabella here in between the eyebrows so what you can do is you can just keep your thumb like this over this point the exact point is if you can move it upside down you can see a little unevenness in the bone in between the eyebrows here so what you will do is you can just apply pressure like this posteriorly you can apply a strong pressure for 6 to 8 seconds then you can release it then again you have to apply pressure for 6 to 8 seconds continuous pressure and you have to keep your eyes closed and just try to focus here you can and chant om or you can uh, remember the god you worship basically or what whosoever you believe in you can remember him and then focus here only focus on your body energy and then pressure apply pressure over this point one method is this another method is you can keep your thumb like this straight and you can keep your fingers over the face and then apply the pressure like this posteriorly you can apply the pressure continuously for 6 to 8 seconds you have to press then release for 3 to 4 seconds then again you have to press continuously for 2 minutes you have to do this exercise by closing your eyes and focusing over here this is a very strong point which is known as the third eye of lord shiva and it directly stimulates the pineal gland so when you see the people hypnotize someone what will they do is they ask to concentrate over here so this is a very strong point which can immediately release the stress so you can do this one thing second you can do is just top of the vault here if you uh, see downwards the most top most point of your body where hairs are curly so you can just make uh, pulp of these fingers together like this and you can keep it here on the top of the body then you have gently press it release it press it and release it you have to press for 0.8 seconds then release then again press so 15 to 18 times you can press here so this is adhipati adhipati means master of the body so it controls all if you know about shat chakra 
so it is the sahasrar chakra location of the sahasrar chakra it controls all the six chakras so basically this is a very powerful point again then third you can do is tatal hrde mark if you make your fist like this and remove uh, lift the other three three fingers just keep the middle finger here touching here so this point is the point of tatal hrde mark means this point or what you can do is you can identify this knuckle the third the middle fingers knuckle and just in front of this is joint one finger below this joint over this area is the talardema so what you can do is you can just keep the thumb like this and press it downwards press it and release it press it and release it press for 0.8 seconds then release or what we can do is we can take some uh, soothing oil and apply over it like brahmi tel and just massage like this in clockwise direction so you have to massage for 2 to 5 minutes over this point so these are some of the points which can help you to reduce the stress so this is the part of self marm therapy accordingly we can do in different condition different one point okay so <clears throat> we have another question what can we do for pain in finger joints due to osteoarthritis as well as for wrist pain due to carpal tunnel syndrome yes very important aspect carpal tunnel syndrome is a very good point, uh, disease where we can have maximum benefits of the marm therapy because as uh, far as western system is concerned there is no medical cure for this uh, condition in maximum uh, maximum patients uh, usually what the doctors do they just instill the steroid injections inside the carpal tunnel or uh physiotherapies are being done for months together and patient is having constant pain numbness in the fingers and all so what we can do is a simple maneuver of the marm therapy we have to identify this snuff box the this area the groove uh below the this base of thumb here is the groove you have to identify it keep your thumb over this groove like this and make a ring like this index finger and thumb you can do this you can hold it tightly and make a small a lighter fist like this tightly you don't have to make a tight fist you have to keep it light like this then you ask the patient to do this circular movement 15 times clockwise and 15 times anti clockwise if the patient is able to do it tightly we can go for this this is also a uh, way to treat yourself self marm therapy and this is again a, an important point to reduce stress the wrist that is mani bandha marm so this is a technique which can be employed for ourselves also and for the patient otherwise what we do is we just do this maneuver we keep the thumb over here over the snuff box and your index finger below this stellar process this is stellar process of the ulna the bony prominence we keep the th finger here and thumb over the snuff box and then we press it like this means perpendicularly we press it like this or the point over the if you follow this middle finger the point over the dorsum of wrist here is the mani bandha marm location so we can press it like this with both like here we keep the index finger and over dorsum we keep the thumb and we can press it like this so this is one of the important marm for carpal tunnel syndrome another is this shipra marm we can press the marm is located in the web of the thumb and index finger this web here it is located here and we can press it like this release press it like this and another important point is if we follow this middle finger over the forearm so we can see we can see if we follow this uh, middle finger like this in the midline the crease of the elbow below the elbow crease if we keep four fingers like this and the point here which comes in line with the middle finger so this is the mm -hmm. point which is known as indravasti marm so again we can apply the pressure technique like this this is press and release okay so these are three marm points and another is this kurch marm the base of thumb we have to identify one finger below this over the thinner eminence here we can apply the pressure and release 
you can see your hand it is tender so this is the kurchma so these are various merm points which can be done for the carpal tunnel syndrome as far as pressure technique is concerned otherwise other methods are uh, required if it is very much tender very much painful we can't apply the pressure so we have to apply the lip medicated paste over this wrist joint then we can go for uh, merm ticket so in that way we can all right any any more questions um any comments um someone is commenting everything has been explained very well so i want, I want to read that out um okay so before we uh, uh, sign off and um, final thing dr gaur would you like to say to your um, viewers uh i would love to say that marm chikitsa is a beautiful science always a beautiful science so the only lacking point is as i told you the research point but now yeah. the government is looking after this and the center council for research in ayurveda and siddha in india has make a expert panel to do documentation of marm chikitsa and uh, various clinicians like me are working on marm chikitsa continuously i am running a marm chikitsa unit so we are uh, doing a lot of work as far as our capacity is so we'll make it popularize and our aim is to make it reach the uh, every individual of the world at least in india or us where there is uh, some say about ayurveda so we'll try to make it reach it to everyone so we have to do it on the mass practice so i'll uh, just say that uh, anyone who is interested to learn shall try to learn this beautiful uh, therapy and uh, start practicing it it is harmless and really very effective that's great i have couple of more questions that have come up while you were explaining so is that okay we have a few more minutes uh, like 2 3 minutes one okay. is for migraine headache and neck pain um if you can take just 30 seconds i know we are uh, close okay i'll just uh, tell a simple maneuver for that you can just yes. keep your both uh, hands like this over the posterior to your uh, end of the elbow uh, eyebrows you can keep your palms here heel of the hands on both sides and your fingers over the skull and you just have to apply pressure like this means you have to give pressure towards inside towards the eyes and from fingers downwards pressure is applied so this maneuver can be done again 20 times the good amount of pressure is required but this works when it has been started in the phase of aura when there is sense of Uh, the migraine attack then you have to start it you can have good benefits along with this shipramaram and there are few another marm points like this and this one you have to do it all together so this maneuver will help you to reduce your pain otherwise it needs proper treatment examination and that can be done by a specialist in the marm science so not in this lecture maybe some sometime <laughs> later on i take uh, diseases we have one last question why do we feel burps on pressing the murmas why do we feel pardon feel burp, burps burps Burp. meaning like, yes yes this shows that mar points really work this is a good <laughs> thing because uh, when we apply pressure over indravasti marm or kurpar marm basically they have direct impact on the git gastrointestinal tract so that's why i told you uh, i forgot to tell you that's why uh, good question you have to do marm uh, marm therapy always empty stomach you don't have to do it after meals because it may cause nausea and vomiting so that's why there is there are burps because it stimulates the gastrointestinal tract so this shows that it has a specific effect on the git so this is a positive thing actually great 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 all right any more questions before we sign off uh, i'm just waiting for a moment <laughs> um well uh, i hope you uh, this uh, uh, session was very useful i can see from the questions please let us know your feedback like us on share, uh, facebook share uh, this uh, video we we'll, you know this is a FE, uh, live video share it with uh, your loved ones other friends give us your feedback um we are narish talk and dr uh, gorav would be coming back with the professional uh, sessions sure. soon in few months or couple of months that uh, you know he will be giving the sessions to uh, ayurveda practitioners or any other practitioner in us or all over the world for that matter so um i am going to sign off any other questions before i sign off i'm just looking at just want to make sure there are no more questions okay so one more last question <laughs> can you use marmatherapy therapy for fibromyalgia 
actually it depends upon the uh, gravity of the disease fibromyalgia is uh, difficult disease to treat but definitely we can reduce the symptoms of the patient and if done continuously we can able to we can be able to control the disease and in few cases there may be uh, the cure actually i can't say because there is not a lot of data on fibromyalgia but as far as my clinical experience is concerned we can definitely reduce the pain and the complaints of the patient we can definitely make him uh, feel more comfortable with the disease so we can uh, give that benefit to the patient okay great i have one more question coming up this see this is what happens i'm ready to go okay i think any other questions no i i think that i think you've answered you've answered all the questions all right well thank you everyone for joining us i want to thank dr gorov and um i am amita namaste and please uh, share and give us your feedback on how we are doing thank you so much and have a great day thank you thank you thank you everyone thank you bye bye